Whatever you do, you give only yourself strength. To give strength to the beyond, to God, to Son of God. The doing has to be of a different nature altogether. That is called non-doing. Jesus is saying that for me to help you, I require your participation. But we are anyway participants all the time. Had Jesus required the same ordinary kind of participation that we are anyway involved in all our lives, he would not need to say this. He is talking about a special kind of participation. That participation is called non-participation. That participation is called, called witnessing or surrender. Stay away. I can do a lot through you, I can help you, I can change the entire world through you if you first step back. You need not come forward to embrace me for I am standing behind you. Step back and you will find me. But because our eyes always keep looking ahead, so we keep searching for Jesus in front of us. Jesus is saying, stop this forward march. Either stand where you are or better still, involute. Go back. That's where I am. And then I'll help you. That is the only way you can give grace strength. By not trying to give it strength in your own ways. Because our ways have, remember, anyway been functional since very, very long. Carrying them forward. would hardly help. Hmm? But I just said that involution would be a better way to support. But choice to involute as in right now as I have heard from you. Involution is the way to strengthen. Then it also becomes a method. And method for is the one who is using the method. So, can we even talk about being blank? Or Have you ever felt sleepy? Yes. When you are sleepy, you have 10 different kinds of choices. You are tired, you are sleepy. You could go and watch the television. You could wander into a market, you could call up a friend, you could read something. You may start munching something. Hmm? Or you may just let the sleep take over. And sleep Taking control of you would be the end of all your choices. Mankind is terribly sleepy.
pitiably tired. But it keeps on still trying to choose and trying to do stuff. Oh yes, I am tired. But why not take a stroll? Why not try the shopping mall? Why not try some exotic pleasure? These are choices. These are choices that you force yourself into even when your basic nature, relaxation, is not only beckoning but actively striving. To take you in its lap. Sleeping, relaxing is not another choice. It is the happening that has always and already happened. It is the happening that is at the beginning of all happening and hence it is the happening that is always waiting to manifest itself because it is the only thing that there is and hence it is the happening that you can never run away from. You are inexorably destined to fall asleep. If you do not allow yourself to sleep on the bed and you rush off to the shopping mall, one day you will fall asleep while shopping. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of how long do you want to torture yourself. <coughs> Sleeping, I repeat, is not a matter of choice. It is inevitable. You will never call destiny a choice. Destiny is that which must happen, which is pre-decided. It will happen because it has already happened. Did it? You see, when you go to the shopping mall, you may find that this choice has not worked. So you may want other choices. One particular choice just leads you into more and more choices. But once you have fallen asleep, that is the end of all choosing. The choices are gone. The one making the choices too is gone. What is left then to choose? So let that happen, which is enveloping you from all sides and also calling from within. You cannot run away. There is no way out. There is also no way in. There is just no way. Your defeat is pre-scripted. You are fighting a lost war. You are waging a battle that never actually started.
That's the same as true of thoughts also. They are to sleep together and God starts money. Stay with the symbolism. We are not talking of daily sleep here. Aren't you tired? Really? Have you not been choosing and choosing and trying and trying since so very long? What else has been time? What else has been evolution? An effort towards betterment. The tide of these millions of years has been rolling on. But has the desire to change abated? Aren't you tired of trying? Either relax right now or you'll find yourself suddenly dropping dead in the shopping mall. But stop, you'll have to. Stopping is inevitable. Your fuel tank is limited. Many times we have certain opportunity which is likely to bring change, but we resist it because of our own commitments at family front, which we will not be able to fulfill. And then we suddenly wait for that real change, which will be uncomfortable, <coughs> and that comes because we are still resisting, resisting whatever opportunity is coming or whatever is options available. Then we wait for the real change. It will should happen naturally. It will be uncomfortable and will actually bring to the, to that uh, position or uh, which will be actually ideal for you for a person. What we should should we change in that situation? Accept that such not. Being an actor does not mean the end of action. Not being an actor only means the end of the question, how must I act? I'll repeat. Not being an actor does not mean the end of action. Action will continue from some other center. Not being an actor only means the end of the question, how must I act? Now you are relieved of acting. So this bugging question, how to act? Where to act, what to choose, whether to act. 
these questions become irrelevant because now action is no more your personal responsibility now action is happening through you not by you so you are relieved of deciding about the action matters become instantly clear decision time is not needed and if time is not needed then the whole process of decision making weighing the alternatives setting criteria coming to a judgment it yes. becomes spontaneous yes all those things are now <coughs> useless those long hours spent pondering those tedious consultations with specialists not needed anymore in a flash things become clear complexity makes way for simplicity now you need not ruminate to know now you just know now you need not meditate in order to be silent now you are just silent now you need no knowledge to know now you need no motive to act now you need no justification to act you just act to others probably now you cannot explain why you are acting sometimes to even yourself you will be unable to explain why you are acting in this way when you are acting from the right center but how does it matter explanations anyway never suffice without explaining without justifications you would know that this is just right the question of action therefore is not a meaningful question the meaningful question is is the actor still awake why has the actor not yet gone to sleep why is he still worried why is he still alarmed it's past midnight but he is still anxious that the house might be raided so he is unable to sleep he has no faith when the actor is awake and i am not talking of awakening in the sense of realization or enlightenment i am talking of being awake in the sense of being sensually awake when the actor is awake then he will be burdened with all the action then all the responsibility to choose to gather energy to have resources to weigh the consequences to bear the fruits of action will lie upon him then he will keep asking what should i do what must i do and these questions have really no final answers be right live rightly give up this unnecessary responsibility to choose to decide to act and then you will find that spontaneously right action is happening through you from where for what end you may not know 
but you also do not need to know. You are all right even without consciously knowing what is happening. This brain of ours is too small to know what is really happening. Yes, live rightly and then the right action will just happen. You will not need to choose. To live rightly, to live rightly is to live rightly even without being clear. <laughs> if it is clear to you, then it has become conceptual clarity. What else do you call as clarity? What else do you call as knowing or realization? When you have Identified yourself with the rightness of a concept that you call as clarity. Is that not so? When do you say that something is clear to you? When you have picked up a concept and decorated it with an icing of righteousness. <coughs> this is the right concept. Now you say I am clear. You don't need any clarity. You don't need any realization. All realizations are mere concepts. 